Hi, my name is Anna, Customer Success Manager at Revenue.io. I often hear from users that they're just not sure the best way to configure their dialer settings. Today, I'm going to walk you through some best practices that will guide you through making the decisions that will give you the best possible user experience. You can see that we're looking at the Ring DNA dialer, and in the bottom left corner, I've navigated to our settings tab. The first thing I want to point out is on the right side, you've got a bunch of handy tooltips. So if you ever forget what a certain setting does, this is a great reminder. The first setting we're going to talk about is click to call. You'll notice in my case that I have it turned off. Because I have it turned off, when I click on a phone number in Salesforce, in this case, I'm clicking from my engage view, you can see that the dialer has loaded. I can look at the activity history and get a really clear picture of who I'm speaking with before I actually click to initiate the call. Now, if click to call was turned on and I clicked that phone number, it would automatically begin dialing. This setting is very much personal preference. If you're in a higher velocity sales environment, maybe you're making a lot of calls, you don't need that context, turn it on and save that time. If you're managing longer sales processes or you need to review activity history and get a little more context, go ahead and leave this one off. Again, that's my personal preference, but it's totally up to you. The next setting is dial next. I always recommend you turn this one on. When you do this and you call from a list, now that list in Salesforce can be a view, a report, or even your engaged view, like where I've just clicked to call. You'll notice in the top of the dialer, we've got this dial next bar. So even though I just clicked on Anna's record, if I click dial next, it'll pull up Tanya for me. Now you'll notice that it loaded the next record, but it didn't begin making that call for me. The reason is because this preview next call checkbox is checked. It's kind of like the dial next version of click to call. So if that's checked, it'll load the next record, but it won't automatically initiate. If it's unchecked, it'll start that call right away. Again, personal preference. I would say if click to call is off, check this box. If click to call is on, uncheck it. That way you can stay nice and speedy. Mute audio notifications when busy. I like to have this one on. Uh, no one likes to hear chiming and noise when they're in the middle of a phone call. You'll notice in the dialer in the top left here, I'm set to an available status. If I click on this, I can mark myself as busy. This will also happen automatically if you are live on a phone call or if you have calendar detection enabled and we detect that you're in a meeting. In those scenarios where I am busy, I would not receive that notification. Desktop notifications and sounds, I do recommend you turn this on. Now you'll notice that when I toggled this on, I received an alert in the top of the dialer softphone.ringdna wants to show notifications. Make sure to click allow. If you accidentally click block, we can change this in your Google settings later, and there's a support doc for that. Um, but this will allow you to see a desktop notification in the top right of the dialer in the event that you get an inbound call, a text, or maybe someone's opening your sequence emails or there's a new hot inbound lead it's time for you to follow up with. Now, record calls, you may or may not see this setting. It depends on the way your admins have configured it, but we're gonna talk about it anyways. Um, recall recording is generally configured at the admin level, but some accounts, they prefer their users to control this. So if you see this, it is again, a personal preference. Assuming you have permission and that you've discussed this with your team, I love to have this on. You can learn so much from your recorded calls. Logging emails to Salesforce. This is a great setting. The first thing I'm gonna show you is how to actually send an email from the dialer. You'll notice this little email button. If you click it, we'll open your native client and you can send that email. With this mail to Salesforce setting, this will put your unique email, you can see my big old email address here, <laughs> into the BCC so that when you actually send that email, it logs right to Salesforce for you. Now, if you've never found your email to Salesforce before, Simply open Salesforce and let's go to sales and then we'll navigate to our settings. On the left side of your Salesforce settings, you'll see this email section and my email to Salesforce. You're just gonna copy this address. It's gonna be unique to you and you'll paste it into this email address section of the dialer. 
Now, one thing to confirm is make sure that your email is listed as an acceptable email address. This means that anytime an email is sent from that address and Salesforce is BCC'd, it'll be logged. This is especially important to check if your company has changed names or even been acquired recently where your email address changed. Call forwarding, very much another personal preference setting. When call forwarding is turned off and you make a phone call, the dialer will go ahead and use your computer to audio, just like if you were using Zoom or Teams or Google Meet. When call forwarding is on, all you're doing is really changing the audio device. So to turn on call forwarding, you'll first have to click on this dropdown and add new. You'll go ahead and name your mobile device. So we'll say Anna's mobile and you'll type in your phone number and you'll click verify. Now, when you click verify, the dialer is gonna give you a call. You're gonna hear a friendly robot that says, confirm that you would like to forward calls to this device. You press one, you're good to go. You'll notice this checkbox. Do not forward to device when dialer is offline. In a sales environment, you often want to take calls whenever you can. If somebody's calling you back, that's a good sign, usually. If you do want to receive calls, leave this unchecked. If you don't want to receive calls when you're logged out, go ahead and check this box. I've received one or two 11 p.m. calls, so I, <laughs> I prefer personally to, to keep that one checked. Call notification and no answer number are somewhat similar settings. So call notifications will allow you to notify another device when you're receiving an incoming call. So maybe you want your dialer to ring through the computer audio, but you also wanna check it on your mobile, a great setting to turn on. And lastly, no answer number. In the event that you miss your ring DNA call, you can actually forward that call to a second device. Some teams like to forward to their mobiles or a desk phone. Others like to forward to a company mainline. The sky is really the limit with these settings. If you ever need to review your dialer settings or any other features offered by Revenue.io, check out our resource center at support.revenue.io.